this man A P this, A P that. Go hit the bank, I break it. Look at they face, they hate it. Some fuck you just can't fake it. She think it's mashed potatoes. Love on like Gary Payton. Can't go half on no babies. So I just shake and bake it. I ball like make it, take it. I hit the mountain splurge. Hop in the group and swerve. Space boy on my shirt. Look like they feelings hurt. So I'ma say a prayer. God be with all my haters. I promise we gon' make it. I ball like make it, take it. Ball, I make it, take it. I like to see you naked. Jump up and do that facelift. Now let's get chocolate wasted. Yeah. Pick with the James Bond on him. I seen the James Bond on him. Bro, I love doing shit like that. That, that shit was tight. Photoshop shit. That shit was sweet. That shit was definitely sweet. You want some water or something? No, I'm good. I got some drinks to water. You know what I'm saying? Er. Boom! All right, man. Hold up. Let me get my shit. Got my joint. What's up, y'all? We in this motherfucker, man. Ring, ring, ring. Back of the class podcast where the cool kids talk about the cool shit, man. We got a very, 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 very special guest in the building today. The man, the myth, the legend. Sam Rossi, how you doing, man? Good, bro. How are you? I'm Gucci, man. I'm feeling great, man. I'm glad you was able to pull down on me, man. Yeah, man. For sure. Absolutely, man. So tell the tell the tell the people what you do, man. Tell them tell them about yourself a little bit. I'm man, I started out just rapping. Um, I was just an artist at first. Um, still am. I still that's still the primary thing I do. Uh, rap and whatnot. I've made a couple beats here and there for like my own stuff, but I don't really call myself a producer or anything like that. Uh, I direct all my own music videos. I did a podcast for a long time, uh, which I recently stopped doing. And I started the Pipeline, the Pipeline show series and whatnot. Okay, so. nice, nice, nice. So, a couple things I wanna touch on there. So, hold on, I'm gonna start with, so the Pipeline 614, you put that together, the one that was at the, um... We're like, all of them. All of, the, all of those, like that was, yeah. All right, yeah, so I performed it that one. It was me, Brian, and who was my boy who did the CB with the hands? When, which one? It was at... Trayview Tavern? 129. Oh, shit, that was last August. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It was like the first, first, first one. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was tight. That shit was stupid tight. Uh, yeah, man. Re me and Raiden started those. Man. Like, like two, February 2017 is when we started that. Okay, so Raiden Labs, that's my boy. So he didn't want him to make the beats and shit like that? Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. I think... Was that your crib? Yeah, Where you, was it? you got hammered in my crib one time, bro. Talk about uh, you, you got hammered because we were bro. shooting footage for the real thing video, okay, and yes. Joff was there. It was yes. you came over for Joff's thing. Yeah, and so it was cool. You were fun as shit. Like it, yeah. nothing bad happened. Like it was, yeah. a, it was a great night. Oh, no, I, mean, I was just I mean, like, yo, my boy's sauced right now. Bro, like, that <laughs> night driving home, man, that was <laughs> shit. That shit was not wise. Like that yeah, shit, bro. That shit was crazy, but I think I made you promise me you weren't gonna drive home. So I'm salty with you now that you, that you just told me you. you I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. But nah, I was super. I was super sauce. But that was a good night, though, man. Was that was, night. I got crazy footage of that night. Yeah, so was, we was freestyling hard as fuck that night. Man. Yeah, for real, for real, that motherfucking uh. Uh, the Faux Loco sipping Dojo Dojo kicking. That's where I came up with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I came up with it. So, motherfucking, so, damn, I'm gonna tell you, damn, that's crazy. So, the the rapping and shit, let's go back to the very beginning. When you start okay. rapping. I started rap. I mean, I've been writing rap since I was probably 12, 13 years old. Uh, in high school, I fucking... I didn't know where to get beats. I grew up in Lancaster, Ohio. There was no hip hop of any kind around. I was one of the only people that I knew that listened to it. Um, but there was this video game called Music Generator 3. Mm. Music Generator was on, it was on PlayStation and Xbox. And like, it, was, it had a bunch of like famous songs and you could go in and it put them out on a grid, like all the individual tracks that you could remix songs with it. And one of the songs was um, Pay the Cost to Be the Boss. No, it was um, From the Church to the Palace by Snoop Dogg. And, uh, sure Keep going. <laughs> and uh and so it had a bunch of hip-hop shit on there and a bunch of hip-hop samples so i was making beats on that thing and then i had a buddy who figured out how to take the top off the xbox and plug this cord in and rip audio directly from whatever the xbox was playing 
And so, can I see the ashtray? And so I was able to rip all the audio of the beats I made in this video game. And then I rapped over them. Then I knew how to record and shit too. So I did that. That was the first iteration of rap or whatever. And that's your first time playing with mixing it. Like, like just the lineup of seeing that software, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. The older that you get, you like all like from Pro Tools to Logic. To it's Logic, all basically the same. It's yeah. all the same shit. So that was your first time really seeing like, oh, okay. So different shit is on different lines and happy yeah. here shit but seeing the 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 like not the vocal but whatever the volume like, okay that's that sound exactly that's that sound and being able to arrange it and then put it into like a whole tetris thing for me so i made a lot of other music and played in other bands and shit because i drum too and uh and play guitar and whatnot but like i didn't really take i, I didn't decide to take hip-hop seriously until i was probably 24 mm. and i was a little older Cause like really, you know, when I was younger, bro, I just didn't have shit to rap about. I hadn't lived through anything, you know what I mean? And so it wasn't until I was 24, I was just working a job. I didn't really know what the fuck I was doing with life. I wasn't artistically satisfied or whatever. So I just started writing raps. And then I met this dude at a party one time when I was on acid and I started freestyling with him and rapping with him. And then he like knew artists and he was a really supportive dude. Shout out my dude, Jay Storm. Uh, Shout out Storm. He, uh, he still to the day. He was the dude I went and saw in Atlanta. Actually, I mean, okay. he's one of like he was my first like mentor in this shit. He taught me how to throw shows. He taught me a lot of stuff. Nice. And I happened to meet him. And then it was a couple months later. I decided, fuck it. I took the rap, found beats for him. You know, made my first little mixtape or whatever. Okay. And that was in uh, I want to say November of 2013. Okay. When I first did that. That's what's up. That's what's that up. That was like the first Sam Rothstein release. You know? All right. Yeah. What was that entitled? Uh, Dangerous Days in Little Vegas. I like that title. So, yeah. what were some of the what were some of the things that you rapped about on that? Like, since you felt like you didn't really have to do that. Uh, I mean, like you know, everybody's first mixtapes are kind of trying to be who they like or whatever. You know what I mean? So, I like, so. a lot of my shit was very like big crit currency kind of car music because mm -hmm. that's really what my life was about. But what I was rapping about what I was doing in my life at the time and shit like that, and I was rapping about the shit I'd gone through in my early twenties when I moved out and. My life was wild as fuck. So I was just rapping about that stuff too. But it was also just like a lot of like braggadocious, super boastful, rapping about mansions I didn't have and shit like that. And you know, and it's like, I was oh, still that. fumbling around, not, I didn't know what my sound was yet. Right. But it's like, every artist has to go through that. You have to fail at some shit because that shows you what your sound is. Well, at the end of the day, like they say nothing is original. Like I see, I, like how they say Kanye West sees it in art or some people see it in colors and shit. I see rap in Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. So honestly, like when I hear some people shit, I'm like, oh, you studied in XYZ dojo. Like yeah, I, can, yeah. I can see it here, like where, like, like you said, like if you're influenced by somebody, you know what I'm saying? They send it, uh, invitations to sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. So, you know. And it's like, I wasn't like, like, not completely straight fighting just, either yeah, it was just like that. but at the time like i didn't have my own producer mm -hmm. so it's like i was getting beats off youtube so you're just searching up tight beats you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it's like that right there will pin your sound onto somebody else a little more but it was very short after that that i actually met the first producer i ever got to work with mm -hmm. and so after that me and him the next project i did was an ep that me and him did completely together and shit like that and you always you can't be somebody else. You're always gonna have your own songs. It's just like yeah. what you said. Whatever you influenced by, it might be like what you like. So your shit might be reminiscent of that. But yeah. you always want to throw your own sauce on it. Yeah, absolutely. So that, so that project you made with him, who, who was that producer's name? Uh, his name was Cincinnati, and uh, Cincinnati, yeah, hard. man, he was um, one of the most talented producers I ever met. He uh, he was like a real old school guy though. Like he ripped all of his samples right off vinyl and shit like that. Like he really went searching for records to find his samples. Wouldn't tell people what his samples were. Nice. And he was a he was a little bit older than me, and so he had a lot more of a knowledge and experience in hip hop than I did. But he really fucked with my rapping, and he really really supported me in that. So the first project we did was called Czar Nation, and um, I was pissed because like three months later, the Ghostface project called Czar Face came out. And I was like, no one's gonna believe that I didn't fucking right, <laughs> get that right, name right. that. But right. I promise I did it first. But um, but yeah, man. Right, nice thing life. And after that, here, you want me to? Uh, after that though, I came out with a project called the Buick Tape. Okay. That was in two. That was in like late 2014, probably. And that was just all about. That was like, um, it was for sure a mixtape, and I'd use beats I didn't own and stuff like that on it. But there was a lot more original beats on there too. 
and it was like way more of like my first real real project that like gave me my style you know music what I mean? is music man people don't i yes. really don't think motherfuckers really give a fuck about covers for real because like honestly like like one of my first like i said i say i said this dojos one of my first sensations was lil wayne and lil wayne built yeah. his career off of motherfucking killing other i fucking teams. fuck with that kind of i'm talking about shit like that though like the dojo like that's yeah. dope as fuck i yeah. do like that because it makes perfect sense yeah like you can you can literally listen to people's music and you can hear like oh okay like you you know what I'm saying you can see like oh he got a little kick cut he got a little like six nine perfect example I could tell instantly with his scream on type right I'm like oh he probably listened grew up listening to rock music lo and yeah. behold he does a whole interview like yeah I was young we used to have to clean up in these rock places they would do rock concerts I'm like it's it's really easy to see like people yeah. are always thrown off by shit and think the shit is people so fucking different. hate on six nine and I I understand it but like man when I hear that dude's music I hear DMX. Mm-hmm. Like he six nine reminds me of fucking DMX, bro. Like mm-hmm. that same aggression and energy and like just the wildness of it. Yeah, because DMX's music was, bro. That music had people scared, bro. It's New York, bro. Like, but that's the thing. But they were also like DMX was originally from Arizona, mm-hmm. and then came to New York yeah. and did his shit. And like everybody, but like by the time he was rapping and shit, I mean, have you ever seen that old Cipher video? Is DMX most deaf, big pun, big L. And I think one, a biggie, and one other person. They're all a Q-tip, and they're all sitting around this table in some diner in New York, and they're all just. Rapping. I have seen that video. It, yeah. Bro, it's one of the most legendary hip hop things I've ever yeah. seen in my life. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's like, crazy for all those people to be in one motherfucking place yeah, and all almost, snapping like that. That's how it happens, though. But people are gonna find videos of us, us. doing the same thing same in shit. Columbus, to where it's like, I, yo, all those motherfuckers are just in the same I, room. I literally, yeah. like, I literally be seeing the same thing. Like, bro, niggas don't even really realize, like, it's really just straight legends. Like, we really, yeah. we really, yeah, but damn, I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, sorry. Oh no, you I went you, off on the six nineteen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you might even yeah. actually help me with the six nine. Hold on, you went back. Uh, six nine. Uh, you were talking about influences and borrowing from people though like the uh, 6 9 worked in a rock club when he was younger or whatever and so that's why like you could hear his influence you were saying your first sensei was Lil Wayne yeah I don't know it was something I wanted to ask you I, I think I, I think I spaced I, I mean if we're talking senseis though because I like the way you put it like that yeah. with me originally like early early growing up the one of the first rappers I ever really really studied was Biggie for sure and because I happened to steal one of his CDs from my stepsister, like the, it was like when he died, I was real little, and that's massive, bro. <laughs> um, right, exactly. I really, that's do this. I really do this for real. <laughs> they pride themselves on being able to ride big cackwoods, smackwoods. And, 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 yeah. I just wanted to let y'all know I really do this for real. <laughs> Two tone. It was de- it was definitely Biggie though, man, and then it was definitely Snoop Dogg got me into West Coast music for sure, and. Um, but then when I really started getting serious with it again, it was the whole kind of new school of people. I'm good on that. Um, I'm gonna have to save my energy for that. I can tell. Oh, so. but, <laughs> um, I don't know. I would definitely say, man, like I was a huge fan of Big Crit. I was a massive Big Crit fan. Me too. The Crit was here was my shit, bro. Yeah. Like that original. Return of Forever was the first Return, one. Also, yeah, that's yeah. One. Return of Forever. That was the first yeah. one I ever heard from him, and I was blown away by it. One of my biggest influences ever, though. It's always been uh, Pusha T. Pusha T and also Game. Game is like in my top five favorite rappers of all time, honestly. He can attack. He, he can, can, man. He can attack and he can just rap. Game always had good him. beat selection, though. Like, that's that's an important quality in rappers that a lot of people overlook. And, like, I don't know, man. It can really make or break an artist. There's it's a lot 50% of. 50% of the song. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I feel like that's honestly why Lupe Fiasco isn't bigger than he should be because, like, he's not great at picking beats. There's a lot of artists that really just. They never figured it they out. Like, Nas I mean, fuck, look at Nas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's like, you know, and, you know, uh, and it's deserved, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it, it is It is some shit when you hear a motherfucker who you know can tear some shit up and you hear them on, like. Like, I want to ask shit. Nas if he has ever heard Illmatic. Like, I want to be like, bro, have you ever heard this album that you made? <laughs> like, right, like, did you hear what you did on this one? But then again, like, he never really did shit with Pete Rock or anything after that. Yeah. So. And maybe that's just really where he, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that's what he fucked with. Because you know what I'm saying? Artists are always subjective. Like, motherfuckers, yeah. like, he might, and, and it could have just also been, maybe he just was strictly a writer, and maybe he didn't write two beats. Yeah, maybe it was producers doing a lot of the work in that shit. I mean, that really could have been it. And it's not like Nas has had fucking 
did nothing but terrible albums. Like, I love a ton of Nas's albums. Like, right. I even like Streets Disciple and shit like that. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't know. There's just sometimes with his newer stuff that I'm just like, yo. But also, maybe it's like, his maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, maybe Nas should have just retired by now. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Well, that newest shit that he did with Kanye, a lot of those albums, because even Tiana Taylor was very upset about her, her album. Yeah. You know? Kanye did a lot of things about that. And that's a lot of just the music industry as a whole. But also, is- man, Nas was the worst fucking part about that album, though. When I heard all the other shit, I was like, yo, I'm down for this. Like, I'm cool with this. But, man, when I heard Nas rapping on it, I was just like, yo, this is out of place. Like, this just doesn't... I only listened to the album one time, so it really didn't blow me away. To me. Yeah, same. Like, so, I don't know. And especially coming off of Pusha T's album, which, like, to me was legendary as fuck. Like, I loved Pusha T's album. Now, how do you feel about that album cover, though? I mean, in what way? It was the Whitney Houston crime, not the crime scene. It was, yeah, it was just a picture of her bathroom. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, yo, it's art. Like, are, is hip-hop not dangerous anymore? Like, is hip-hop not supposed to offend people anymore? Like, that's the shit that pisses me off, bro. Like, yo, like, some of the biggest hip-hop music in the world was about objectifying women, about fucking killing people, killing police. Or, like, hip-hop is dangerous music, man. Like, it doesn't always have to be either. But it's like, yo, Pusha T is... That dude's made a career off talking about selling cocaine in mass quantities. Like that ain't a good thing. Yeah, so it's and like it's dangerous. She did die from a drug overdose. Yeah, so. personally though, aesthetically, just the look of it, I thought it was perfect. <laughs> I thought it looked perfect. I was like, yo, that's an amazing. Because at first, I didn't recognize what it was from. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's wild. It just looks like a rich ass bathroom that's all messy because they've been partying or doing whatever. Mm-hmm. Which it was, but I didn't know whose rich ass bathroom it was. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but honestly though, like, what can I guess coming from a different world of like metal, like metal music and other shit like that, like there's some shocking ass album covers that like, I've seen some shit, man. And like, even in alternative hip hop, there's some wild shit, but like. Now, when you put it in that perspective. A Whitney Houston's bathroom, it'd be one thing if it was like her dead or her, you know what I mean? Like. Right. Or doing some shit or some (laughs) shit like that. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, and. At the end of the day, like you said, this is Pusha T. Like he, this is what he does. Like it right, is, you know. Or what you <coughs> but I also just felt like <coughs> I felt like it was super appropriate in terms of the look of that photo versus how the sound of that album was and the subject matter of it. Like to me, it was super appropriate. Also, but I don't believe Pusha T chose that. I think Kanye was the one that chose that. Yeah, he did. He spent the money to get the picture. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? He has something to do. Eighty thousand dollars for that picture, man. Eighty thousand dollars. I thought I heard eighteen, but eighty sounds more appropriate. Uh, yeah, sounds more. Appropriate. When you when you realize there's the, no the way price. that you just, and I and I know I know for a fact probably sir, because that even sounds like a weird. Why wouldn't be an even? Yeah. $80,000? No, bro. In in like the late 90s, a picture of like Princess Diana or like somebody uber, uber famous in the late 90s was going for a hundred grand. Mm. Like one photo, a clear, good photo. And right. so when, when people, cool. yeah, when people look at the paparazzi prices and shit like that, because those are the people that own those photos. They get in there first and they blah, 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 blah. Those photographers, they have rights to all the shit they take pictures of. And so like... There's probably people that, like, the guy that took that photo, I bet he didn't give away all the rights to that. Mm. You know he what I mean? probably maybe Kai had to come in him directly. Yeah. Who knows, man? Who but. fucking knows? That's just fucking crazy. But, all right, so you said that the podcast you're about to get ready to start, did you say you about to start it up again with, with yeah. Raiden? Uh, no, well, Raiden's going to be, uh, be on it. He's going to be okay. DJing for the whole thing. Nice. It's going to be like a live event and a podcast mixed in one. Nice. And so it's going to be on October 1st. It's going to be every other Monday, basically, after we start it. That's what we're shooting for right now. But it's a matter of getting the guests and whatnot. Uh, First one's free. Basically, all it is, man, we're just having a guest come through. We're going to interview them. And then we're going to have them perform a couple songs, talk about them, shit like that. And then after that, you know, we're just going to, you know, just figure out something to talk about. But we're also going to let the crowd chime in and shit like that. You know what I mean? And give their two cents and whatnot. Any bit will... Uh, we can keep, keep that out of the well, well, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be at the spot. It's gonna be at the hookah bar, at the spot. Okay. So October first. Hookah Uh, no, it's like it's on. I believe it's on Hudson and Summit. No, I mean, like, are we gonna be doing hookah during the? I mean, yeah, it's a hookah shop. Nice. So yeah. Um, but we just wanted some place that's like chill and not necessarily a music venue. We wanted a place people could sit because it's like you're gonna be sitting there just listening to people talk. So, but I'm trying to get. 
I don't know, man. I'm just trying to experiment with live podcasting and stuff like that. I've never really done it before, and I've, I've seen, I've had other buddies that do podcasts. Shout out to my dude, Product. Um, they fucking <coughs> did a live podcast of theirs it's called the Rock and Roll Book Club. They like read a different musician's biography every month. I'm good. And, uh, and then they review it. And like, they got a good amount of fans after doing it a couple years, and they threw a fucking live one at like the Upper Arlington Library. And they sold like 200 tickets or some shit. Nice. And so it's like, it's definitely there. Like there is an audience for it, but it's just like, it's the thing about, I feel like podcasting and hip hop is a little slower to take off because people that are fans of hip hop are listening to hip hop and not podcasts. Cause like you, when you really think about it to consume podcasts, you gotta be, that's a big chunk of your listening time. If, if you really, because me, I don't listen to music for more than an hour a day. I fucking know I don't. Like, especially now that I make it and shit like that. Like, I barely listen to music. Fucking thank Jesus. Like, like yo, fuck, it's just like, not the same to me I anymore. Thought, like, I thought how, because, like, in, like, literally my transition more as of late is more. Like, my media is, like, when I'm driving, I'm either, I, I, I'm, I low-key have to force myself to listen to music. Right. Just off of the strip of, I have to stay in this realm of this shit. And anything that you don't practice, you know what I'm saying, you're going to get rusty at that shit. So I kind of have, you know what I'm saying, and even for my podcast, because new music, you know what I'm saying, you got to be kind of plugged into a point. But I, like you said, it's a big chunk of your listening time. Yeah. If you're listening to a two and a half hour podcast, you know what I'm saying, even if you break it up over the course of some days, you're only driving for like 20, 30 exactly. minutes. Exactly. And like, I only got into podcasting so heavy because like, I had an office job where I could listen to headphones while I worked. Mm -hmm. And so, like, after a while, I was like, yo, I don't, it's like nine in the morning, I'm hungover, I don't want to listen to fucking music right now. Mm -hmm. And so, I'd just be wanting to hear something. And so, I would just start looking up shit on YouTube that interests me or whatever. Or I'd listen to just, like, the Howard Stern Show or, like, stand-up comedians or whatever. And that's how I got into podcasting and really, like, discovered it and shit like that. That's how I found, like, Joe Rogan's early podcast and stuff. And this is probably, like, 2013, 14. And so I had five fucking hours a day to listen to podcasts. And that's a long fucking time, but most people don't, you know what I mean? And uh, especially younger people, because younger people work way more. And a lot of times younger people don't have fucking office jobs either. And so it's like, they can't be listening to shit at work. So you're talking about a big, big chunk of whoever's listening time just to make them listen to your podcast. But they can, yeah. like a lot of people, like whether you're working fast food, people throwing their headphones in. People working at call centers, nine out of ten they can throw their headphones in. Yeah. People at warehouses definitely <coughs> throw their headphones in. So it's more like, and the reason why I think that the hip hop podcasts are becoming very, very prevalent now is because, well, people just like conversation. Period. Yeah. Like people just like to be able to to talk to one another, to talk to one another, to be able to maybe try and understand people's different viewpoints and mm -hmm. like you know what I'm saying just get an introspective on shit because a lot of times you'll hear somebody else talking about some shit and it'll like play and you're like oh maybe that's how the person that I know was feeling based on what they saying it's not yeah. a guarantee but it's like you know so you that's where I think that the product but with hip hop people love hip hop so much but you only get to love it just by listening to it mm -hmm. now that you get to hear people talk about it and there's actually like, cause now also another thing, podcast, I mean, hip hop itself is not just music anymore. It's very more like media, like social media for in itself, like between the beefs, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, who, who's who fucking who and who's fighting who, yeah. who, you know what I'm saying? All of that shit, you have to keep that on your social media just as alive as you do with dropping projects within yeah. a timely fashion. So you really have to do two things. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's still just content. It's just a different yeah. form of content. Yeah, and a podcast but. allows them to be able to allow somebody else to be able to gather all of that shit for you and then feed it to you. Like, okay, so this is everything that happened and then this is the person they can talk about it and shit. And it's just like, and it's like you find those people and those personalities that you gravitate towards, that you basically share their opinion, which is why you listen to them. Right. And then you kind of trust them to do it. Right. And because um, there are people that like Charlemagne more than Joe Budden or fucking Star more than Charlemagne or, you know, right. academics more than them. And that is what's cool about it, though, because it does 
the distillation of media and shit like that and what's actually happening in our culture is being given to us by people that are way closer to it than you know MTV News or fucking BET or any of the older organizations mm-hmm. were really doing it. All that shit felt watered down and fake by the time you hear it. With the internet age, we need shit right now. Like right. everything is about knowing shit as it's happening right now, sometimes before it even happens. And podcasting really gives people a lot more context for that too. Like I've learned so much shit off of listening to Drink Champs, dude. Like Drink Champs is wild. They'll be getting people to say crazy shit on that. Because Nori knows so many people and he's had right. such long standing relationships with people. Right. That, like, when he gets them fucking trash and then he starts asking them about stuff that happened, dude, people will say crazy shit. Drunk. Yeah, dude. Yo, they got 50 Cent drunk, bro. And he was saying shit that was just like, yo, you can't be saying this shit on a podcast, bro. <laughs> like, he was saying shit about Diddy fucking people's wives and, like, he was saying wild shit, dude. But 50 Cent also doesn't really drink a lot. They got Irv Gotti super, super high. Irv Gotti doesn't really smoke a lot. And so it's like, he just keeps them all balanced. That's what like interviewing is. And it's in the, in, in you're getting him unfiltered, yeah. unedited for an extreme amount of time. And like you said, they're under the influence. So that is, that's what I've learned a lot from like Joe Budden's podcast, just yeah. as far as like the music industry. Like I never knew so much. Like it's so many things that I'm just finding out just from listening to like, the Joe Bud Pirates said, like, I found out last night that Kanye West didn't write Jesus Walks. I am, I'm like, the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, people have no idea how much music their favorite artists haven't written. On life, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, like, they, they, but it's a beautiful thing. Because me, I make all my music. So when you, like, you know what I'm saying? You hearing somebody just saying that shit. Yeah. You, somebody got to tell you. At some point, like, if you're not going to figure Oh yeah, just about um I got I gotta start remembering shit. But just like just you know what I'm saying, people not writing their own music like the oh, Lauren Hill yeah. the Lauren Hill shit that came out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man, like yo, but people don't understand. Like yo, Diana Ross didn't write half of her shit. Well she's a singer. Yeah, but why is it okay for singers? It's well, not okay for rappers. I feel like with singers, your I feel like your contribution is your vocal talent. You have beautiful vocal control, you can sing, you're a singer. Now, if you're also a talented writer as well, and you write from a place of personal experience, and then you also sing, I do believe that that's a beautiful thing, but I also think that like a lot of people as singers, it's just like an actor. You're able to be able to take something that somebody wrote, put yourself in that position, and convey that emotion as if you're that person. See, that's I don't know, man. I feel like every art form, you either do it originally, or you do shit that other people wrote for you. And I think that really where the big divide is, is... Uh, between pop music and then shit that's just in the genre because like in most shit in hip-hop people be like yo we would not be cool with jay-z not writing his raps right Right. we'd be fucked up if we found out about that or you know Nas or whoever but then when you look at the hip-hop artists that have transcended into pop like kanye has because jay-z never really crossed over into pop that's what's so crazy about his success is that he never really became a pop artist every other hit even Snoop Dogg dabbled in that shit but like uh I don't know man maybe when, some of his his songs had like pop success like Big Pimp Big Pimp and Smith and T like if, yeah if, that was probably if, the if anything you biggest, do with Beyonce and, and like pop. and like 90 99 problems too like transcended it even though it's such a hardcore hip-hop song it still transcended he did the whole sound. black album I mean not the, the whole one album with uh what was that what was that rock group that he did that whole album with oh Lincoln Park that yeah. shit that shit was pop yeah, so and that shit was fire too. It was but, fire as fuck, but it, um, like yeah. So he's he kind of but like when you look at Jay Kanye Z, though, like pop. Kanye's had like real real pop hits, mm-hmm. and Kanye is also a producer first. People forget that like mm-hmm. he is a fucking producer. Same way Dr. Dre is. Dr. Dre didn't write half the shit he's ever rapped, but no one fucking cares. Well, the people that you're saying though, you like producers like Kanye. We won't kind of give him give him a little bit of slack slack because like you said. He's a producer. And also, all the raps we've ever heard, I'm pretty sure Kanye's written them. Like, I think you could tell when Kanye's written something versus when he It's hasn't. really, really hard because Travis Scott's new album sounds very, very reminiscent of Kanye West to me. And I'm like, yeah. hold up. 
and Travis, but the thing is, Travis Scott didn't. They said it shows like it's different writers on his shit. So it's like you really don't look at but then Travis Scott himself again is more of a producer, and I thought he mixed his own shit, but then he's got a different person who mixed it. So now you're almost at a point now where hip hop is like, well, when is it that you did? Yeah, Mike Dean mixes all this stuff. Yeah, so it's like you know what I'm saying like with the at least when it comes to singing and Diana Ross, at least I know like well, shit, you ain't using no other motherfucker's voice. That's your voice. Yeah. Like, but hip hop. I'm giving you, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm giving you your credit because of how you do lyricism. Especially nowadays, though, when more rappers are singing, I feel like we're just going to see more and more of that shit, dude. Well, nah, because that's... Because, like, Drake always... is a pop artist to me. Yeah, he does hip-hop. I'm not trying to take that away from him, but I'm just saying, like, he has reached the level that he makes fucking pop songs, dude. Yeah. Like, his songs become memes. And, yeah. like, I don't know. It, I don't give a fuck that he hasn't written a lot of shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, it's I, just, I think it really just didn't work. Well, because also my other thing is like, yo, 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 <laughs> fucking Quentin Miller needs to thank Drake, like, you, you know, every day of his life for even doing that. Because like, yo, I've heard those reference tracks. Quentin Miller is not a good artist. Like, yeah. he's not. He's a great and he writer. he still tries to perform now, and it's yeah. still not like... People are like, no, no one's checking for that, dude. Because yeah. you, and you fucked up. You gave your shit to Drake, and it was way better. Man, not even you fucked up. You made money off of that shit, which a lot of artists do, which is a lot of what a lot of people miss. Yeah. That's part of the music industry. A lot of people who are hot, are like upper echelon in the music industry, if they're hot right now and they're trying to put together a project and you have a nice song and you're not sweet, they may cash you out or just all, all the way take your song and just give it to that person and they might just have that shit on their album. Yeah. And that's what, you know what I'm saying, I guess... Seeing like a back to where we were talking about seeing the Joe Budden podcast and shit like that, really, I never was aware of shit like that. Like, oh yeah. shit, I could be coming up with a hard ass album and have sweet ass music, and a nigga who's just hotter than me can come and just take my song, re rap yeah. my shit. Like, bro, fuck uh, no, hell fuck, no. fucking problems was supposed <laughs> to be on Good Kid Mad City. Which one? Fucking problems, the ASAP Rocky oh, song. Oh, yeah, yeah, that shit was supposed to be on Good Kid Mad City. Mm, okay. But oh, like, yeah. and it's like that shit happens all the time. To where it's like, yo, this would be way better on your album. It would be, but like, oh, who did, who did it go to Drake? No, it went to ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky. Yeah, it wouldn't have fit for Kendrick's album. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he did get cashed out for that. Like, oh, absolutely. As as I mean, he, if he wrote it for sure. As long as it but, makes bad bitch, yeah, yeah. As long as it makes. Because I mean, I've already, too. I've, I've made music to where it's like. You know, I write a hook or something, but it, I know it would sound better in someone else's voice. So mm -hmm. it's like, I oh, don't, no, ta I, I don't take that away from them for singing a hook that somebody was like, "Yo, I wrote this intended for you" and shit like that. Oh, I, yeah. I guess I just feel like people don't understand how common it is in the rest of music. Period. Right. Like every or, uh, like country, fucking R and B, fucking everywhere else. Rock music a little less sometimes, but even then it happens a lot. And more like commercial stuff but like yo with artists because you got to think about the weight that a drake single has mm -hmm. if a drake single tanks or a drake album or a Nicki minaj album or something like that they have put millions of dollars into this shit already right and they're trying to make tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars off of this shit as they probably do make mm -hmm. and so it's like that is the difference between probably 200 to 500 people's actual jobs like actual nine to five jobs. Like there's a lot more on the line when you get that big. Like you're a corporation at that point. So they're not gonna fucking chance it on hoping you're the next Adele. They're gonna be like, no, we need to have fucking people Adele, that know how to do this shit. shit. We're yeah. just gonna give it to fucking Adele, like yeah. Yeah, on life. And you will be compensated, hopefully. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Unless you think that it's just something, but who knows? So that that oh so did you said that James Bond shit, that's the next pipeline? No. So well the next pipeline by the time this comes out, it won't be the next one. But the next pipeline that everyone watching needs to worry about is uh, October 27th. It's going to be the Trick or Treat and the Trap Show. Uh, it's going to be a Hamptons on King. It's eight bucks. Bobby Biz, Perez, Elijah Banks, um, Lord Bingo. It's, it's going to be, there's a ton more people too. It's going to be very, very dope. So that's the next pipeline. Um, Declassified is like a little show series I started. That basically we just have artists come through and perform all unreleased tracks and unfinished mm -hmm. ideas and just like incomplete stuff that's right. and so like that's all it's based around so the very first one we're doing is in cincinnati that's next week on the 27th so i don't know if this will come out before then but then the next one we're doing in columbus is october 20th 
That's okay. declassified too. So that one's gonna have uh, uh, Tobia. It's gonna have it's gonna have a bunch of people. King Drop's gonna be on it. Um, so I think I'm too fried. Nah, fam. I, I, I like that idea. I like that idea. Where do you like? So, what would you tell people? Like, what is the best thing to do when you got these ideas and then implement them? Actually, get them out there and going. Man, I don't know. Like, that's just something that I've always been good at, and I've always enjoyed about this. That's where like. That's really the, like the juice I get out of all of this shit. It's just the idea that like I can think of something and then I know the people to call and figure out a way to get it moving and off the ground and shit like that. And it just came from years of really grinding and doing tons of shows and meeting a lot of people and saving a lot of people's numbers mm -hmm. and maintaining relationships with people and being able to provide shit for people. Like that's the one thing that people don't get about the game in general. And this is just the game of life too. It's like, bro, you gotta provide value right. to people. Like, and if you're just asking for shit and you just wanna be put on by people, like, yo, that's never gonna happen. Right. People just aren't gonna do that. And you gotta show them like why you need to have a favor done for you and why it would be beneficial. Cause you're not asking for a favor, you're asking for them to invest in you and they're investing their good name or their reputation and shit like that into you. Right. So, um, but in terms of just like, if you have an idea for a show or whatever, um, I would just ask you to think about it and fulfill the idea in your head as to how you'd want to run it. Then in your own mind, walk through the front door and be just a member in the crowd and stand there for three hours. And then ask yourself if you would want to do that. Because a lot of people be throwing shows, man, and they're asking for favors. They're asking people to just spend money to come see a bunch of motherfuckers they don't really like and shit like that. And it's like a lot of hip hop shows are run very, very badly. And they have been for a very, very long time. And it's like this everywhere. It's And I've been to a lot of different places and seen how it's run and the same mistakes get made everywhere. In fucking LA, Detroit, Virginia Beach, in fucking Louisville, it's the same shit across the map. Exactly. And so we have just- Like what are some examples of some of the mistakes you see on making? Man, um, just putting too many people on the lineup. Uh, that's one. Put, just putting your friends on the lineup. That's another one. Um, having it be some shit that it's like, look, there's certain kinds of hip hop that is made to be seen live. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people that are more lyrically inclined or like that kind of shit don't really like seeing trap because they're not trying to vibe to it. But the people that like trap, they're just trying to vibe. So it is a great show to them. But there are some people that go to shows because they want to hear people fucking rap and they want to be impressed and shit like that. So it's all about you got to find the artists that are going to have that certain appeal and put them in the right slot. I think a lot of people just think you can throw a bunch of good artists up there and it's going to automatically work itself out because it might not. Also, looking at scheduling, looking at like, yo, if you book this artist, if they've done seven fucking shows in Columbus the past month, on one hand, yeah, that says they're working. But on the other hand, it says no one's going to go fucking see them because they've already seen them six times probably. Right. At least three. So there's just levels to this shit, man. When me and Raiden, when we're done with the show, if it goes well, we're not like celebrating and packing or patting ourselves on the back. Like we're thinking about what went wrong. Like we're taking notes and we really, really care about this shit, man. And so if you want to do good live music, just understand that that's what you're competing against. It's like full ass bands and shit like that. You know what I mean? And like, if you're throwing a good show, the very first pipeline we ever did, man, the same night, it was in February and there was a Chris Brown it was Chris Brown, 50 Cent, and Fabulous. We're all at the Shot and Scene Center. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, man, there's no one coming to my show and shit like that. But it was a random ass 65 degree night in February. And like, people came out and shit. And she was down. Yeah. And it was like, it went really, really well. And like, that really made me believe in the potential that we have as a marketplace here. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? And so I don't know, man. It's just know your audience, know what you're trying to do, and make sure you're just doing something that hasn't been done before you yeah. know that's really what it is to do some shit that you would want to go to that no one's doing you know because that's what i really wanted with the pipeline like i wanted to see more out of town people on lineups and stuff like that so okay i fucks with it i fucks with it so any any new music coming out for you anytime soon or are you just yeah yeah it? um no nah, me and uh me and ray have been working on a new album since like june so it's still probably got a couple months to finish um, it'll, but we are currently working on it and, um, the title and shit like that, I'm going to save for now. I'm not going to release it yet. I got to wait. 
but we are yeah it's gonna be a full-length album and so this will be my actual first full-length like release because i've done eps i've done mixtapes and shit but i've never done like an actual album and yeah it's a super technical it's a big technicality like it, there's really no fucking difference anymore it doesn't matter technically there is and i mean it, all, it really just depends on how like it, it depends on your mindset going into it because like, i was going to ask you what you like how you what kind of differentiates it for you but i think that because i see you I, I see you say that on facebook a while ago about like man like it really is a lot of motherfucking work to make an album yeah and you know what i'm saying and it, and it is just from like it, it, it and that's it's a testament to it in a lot of ways it's like i like when we heard that who it is like i will not change that shit came out yeah. like a year and a half ago yeah. and then now you see travis's album just came out like a month ago yeah. so right there just lets you know how long you're recording music writing music chopping music mixing getting it, mixing, it, it mastering, yeah. and then once it's all done you're sitting on it now you're plotting how to release like it's but it, it's it's like cooking a meal you know you yeah can't cook it too fast we kind of we got off tour at the end of may and like we had a bunch of we had a very crazy experience that just like we knew that we were going to have to do an album we didn't know what it was going to be and the last night of the tour, we were in Virginia Beach and we did acid before we went on stage. Mm. And that was one of the most intense performances I've ever had. But then we just tripped on the beach for like fucking a good five, six hours. Nice. And just like dismantled all our minds and all, and we hadn't slept in three actual fucking days, bro. Mm. And we were just driving all over the place and like, we came home, we made it home the next day. It was like an excruciating 11 hour drive. And even when we got home, we didn't go to bed. And we just sat and we just figured out exactly what we needed to do. And then in June, that's when we started making the beats for the album. So, cause like we've been making this album from scratch basically. Mm -hmm. And so, started making the beats in June. I started writing more in July and shit like that. And I've still been slacking on the writing. It's not even done being written yet. But I'm also doing it in a whole different process this time. But like, to me, what the difference is in terms of an album or a mixtape, it's just like, with an album, I want it to be played front to back. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to press play at the beginning and not feel the need to change it. Like the best example of an album like that to me, at least that's come out recently, is My Crazy Life by YG. Mm -hmm. Like that album is fucking flawless to me. And it's got, it because first of all, it's just an album of 15 fucking bangers the whole time. But there's an R&B banger, there's a fucking drug dealing banger, there's a fucking, fucking bitches banger, there's a gospel banger, there's a gang banging banger, it's like there's every style of banger the whole time, bro. And it tells a story the whole way through though, like to me it, it, it really felt like the chronic, it felt like, oh shit, this is my generation's actual like chronic album like that. And ever since I've heard that album, I've wanted to make an album like that. That's just like, yo, not even in the sense of like telling a story and shit like that. Just this something album that's will. just got a synergy where yeah. it's like, like how you felt like that. Mm -hmm. like it's just a good album where you don't got to skip nothing. It's, it's not missing nothing. Exactly. I just, I fucking, dude, I could talk for hours about that album. I love that I shit so much. I listen to that shit because I've heard a lot. It's got a lot of accolades. It does, bro. And it's like Kendrick's on that shit and like, you know, Schoolboy's on it. He's got all the Black Heavy on it, I think. Drake's on it. Drake and YG together is always a great pairing. Like Drake, or Drake always makes a YG song even doper and shit like that. Mm. But uh, and his new sound is, is is different. It's definitely not as West Coast and stuff like that. Because I'm a huge, huge, yeah, I'm a huge fan of West Coast hip hop, man. Like I, that's I've studied that style of hip hop probably more than any. Mm. And so, because I've always loved riding music. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I've always loved shit that you, like that was intended to be played in a car. You know what I mean? That's always the type of hip hop I've grabbed. Like that's why I love Big Crit and Currency and shit like that. You know what I mean? I always like car music, right? And stuff. Shit that just sounds good. Like got the thumbs. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Smooth shit. The thugs that like shit that you can just smoke a blunt at like 40 miles an hour too. Like right. not even driving fast, but just like cruising. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's the type of hip hop that I've always really, really loved the most. Yeah, you put it in a perfect perspective, man. So. 
That's the last thing. I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna let you cook. What what happened so on, on Facebook? You was wild the other day. <laughs> with your main crush Mondays. What what, what happened? Like, Yo, nothing happened at all. Nothing happened at all. Like I've just seen people always do those posts and they're funny to me. And like right. it just I randomly woke up just thinking of like the most fuck rapper shit I could think of. Bro, you was you was <laughs> I'm like Rockstein is really letting it be known just how deep mm-hmm. his his music knowledge is. Like he said, your man Crush Monday spent twelve hundred on a four K video, video and then forgot to upload it in HD. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro, he spent twelve hundred on a video. I'm like, bro, this man Rothstein has lost it, man. Like, but yeah, so like, how active are you on social media? And like, what does it does it help you? Like, what do you think? Uh, yeah, man, I'm very active on social media, or at least I try to be. I try to not. I found that with social media, man, the law of attraction definitely applies. And like, if the, if if you're out here and all you care about is getting followers and shit like that, that's all you're gonna get is just a whole bunch of Instagram followers you can't do shit with. Right. And I've met plenty of artists out here that have 20, 30, 40,000 Instagram followers and shit like that. And on Instagram, they look super, super popular, but they live damn near the same lives that we do. Girl. And it's just like even the females, bro. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The females be having all the motherfucking followers and taking. And like, yo, money. that's fine though if you're just trying to be a model because that's your fucking job is to get looked at. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yo, I'm I'm not mad at the Instagram models. I'm mad at the Instagram rappers yeah. because it's like I be looking through these dudes' accounts and it's like, oh, okay, well you got twenty thousand followers because you share memes. Right. That's easy. Right. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, you got forty thousand followers because. You know, you take cool ass pictures in front of your uncle's Lamborghini and shit like that. But like, I don't see a single picture with you with a mic in your hand. Right. And so that's what I look for when I'm looking at people. Cause I have to do that all the time for, you know, when I'm researching artists for the pipeline and shit like that. Like for the past two days, I've just been studying North Carolina hip hop and Kentucky hip hop and shit like that. And just looking through the different artists that they have. From like, and from like what, like from SoundCloud or like? Everywhere, yeah, everywhere, bro. I Google shit. I look at newspaper articles. I look at everything, man. I look at. I just try to get a general idea of what a region of hip hop is like. And then how do you and get in touch with those people, or are you just like saying? Just like reach that? out on social media, man. You just email people if they got a phone number. You call it. You text them. It's just like you just reach out, bro. The information is all there. Right. And like I, me and Raiden, you know, like I, I booked a whole ass sixteen date tour in about two weeks. And like a lot of those dates and shit was just calling people that are hitting people up on Facebook that I remembered were from there or whatever. And just tracking people down and figuring out who does shows, who knows connections to venues, who knows artists that are really working out there that can bring their crowd and shit like that. And it's like, that's what I want to do now, man. I was like, like, gonna say like, would you, oh, so you do put the shows on, like would you ever consider like managing like a single artist or a group of artists? Nah, I don't want to really do that, bro. Like I want to be more of an A&R. Like I want to be the dude that, I want to find like the next four chance the rappers. Mm -hmm. Like I want to find like, I want to be closer to the ground than anybody as to what's really happening organically in hip hop, as opposed to the shit that's just being propped up by labels or complex or vice. Yeah, or, you know what like, I mean? So define, define like organically, like what you mean by it. Man, like, look, there's, uh, I found a whole pocket of artists from Greensboro, North Carolina. And like Greensboro right now has a crazy scene. And when you look at it geographically, you know, cause I've done a couple different shows now in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I went there twice on uh, my last two tours. And like, so I know a decent amount of people there and I've met some artists that are from Greensboro, which is just 20 minutes over which is just 20 minutes over from Raleigh, which is just 20 minutes over from Durham, which is where fucking Little Brother and Ninth Wonder are from and shit like that. Mm. And so like, that's a very rich in hip hop area. And North Carolina hip hop is so fucking lit because it's further north. So they have a lot of lyrical artists, but it's still the South. So all their shit knocks too. And it's fucking saucy as fuck. And so like, um, I just, I'll find one artist and you go to their SoundCloud. That's that dojo shit I was talking about. Like you're literally geographically breaking down the different like fighting styles that are indigenous to that place and yeah, fucking like like the different Cause it shit. does matter bro and when you travel and shit when you go different places you see that bro it bro like matter. that's why out here in ohio most motherfuckers are lyrically uh, like it's yeah. lyrics out here like a lot of them are like we because even down to motherfucking like that's why they put call centers out here because we speak yeah very well. exactly we read very well so our lyrics are going to end up inadvertently and also we cuss, well. we cuss more than anybody <laughs> we do for real like that's a proven fact columbus ohio we cuss more than any city in the world or well in the u.s and i so, do cuss a lot i do cuss a lot too 
Like we just do. We're angry people. Our women curse a lot. Uh, yeah. I love it. I love I, I like love when shit. women curse this like shit. The it's just foul mouth women. <laughs> like, I love that shit, bro. Um <sighs> But no nah, man, um it's just crazy going to these different places though, because when you go up to Detroit, you know, it, man, they are about the bars up there. And those dudes can wrap circles around people. But it's like it's harder to find artists with a bounce up there. You know what I mean? And it's just like different places have different cultures and shit. That's just tight. Man. And so what I just look for the artists that I see I don't want to say like oh, I see myself in, but like just artists that I see like yo, if I've seen you post that you're doing shows and I see videos of you in front of a crowd and stuff like that, like you can just tell who's more serious and who's not, man. Right. When you go to a motherfucker's page and it's just like the first nineteen posts are just him in the backyard with his kids, that's great. You're a good dad, bro. I ain't mad at you for that. But like also don't tell me that you're out here as serious as a lot of these other people. Right. You know what I mean? Or it's like if it's your rapper page and it's just pictures of you and your girlfriend, like what the fuck are you doing, bro? You're a rapper. Like, what are you doing? What, what? Like, I don't get it. And yeah, your Instagram is supposed to be like a uh, snapshot into your life and all that. But it's like, and yeah, me, I've never been good at that. Yeah. I've never been good at being like, hey guys, here's what I mean for breakfast. Like, I don't give a fuck. No one else gives a fuck either. And it's like, so it's like, I got too many flyers and shit to share. Like, I got, I just, I do. So it's like, like I'm doing shit, bro. Like, yeah. I'm making moves out here. Like, cause you're like, I'm, hey, motherfuckers are saying it, but other motherfuckers are doing it. But, yeah, like I mean, you gotta you gotta walk the walk and talk the talk, man. Like, so how do you? I don't know. How do you fucking um? What recommendation would you give to to somebody who is trying to be able to more show that they they put in that work? Just like, well, I guess I actually do it. Just take pictures of it. Honestly, man, a lot of times that's <laughs> all it is. Just like, just have somebody. If you've got a, a fucking entourage of any kind, if you have a group of dudes with you of any kind. Make sure one of them's taking pictures, even on his phone. And also, stop recording videos like this. Record them like this. Right. If it's on Snapchat, fine. If it's Facebook Live, fine. But do this shit if you're just recording a video, just like this is doing right now. Portrait. And, like, <laughs> it's so fucking annoying when I see that shit. Also, like, make your shit look official. Like, make it look clean. Like, yo, I'm sorry. If you're out here... A lot of people who are using these video apps and shit like that that have the watermark in it. It's like figure out a way to get that shit out of there. Even if you don't oh, wear the deep. little logo of the app and shit like that. Like, yo, that's mm -hmm. instinct that makes your shit ten times cornier. No matter how cool you make it look in the app. You know what I mean? Just spend the three fucking bucks. Spend the three bucks and just get the full app and shit like right. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel you. See, see, Rob trying to he give me all the gems, man. Spend that fucking three dollars, get the app for real, get that little shit out the bottom corner of your shit. Cause people are watching, man. Like you want to say that you don't care what motherfuckers think, but you kind of got to, cause perception is reality. But also, man, like everybody has a different. Uh, it's like what works for me isn't gonna work for other people. Right. What works for other people, like yo, I'm just too old to be out here with a million fucking followers from Instagram that I all knew, like, yo, Instagram wasn't even invented when I was in high school, bro. Right. So, like, I, I, I just don't have that. I was late to it. I was 25 before I ever got an Instagram. You know what I mean? And it was hard as fuck to build followers, so a lot of people just try to give up on it because they don't really want to do it. And it's like, fine, bro, if you really don't want to be on social media like that, I guess you can do it. But how the fuck else do you expect people to find you? Like, how else do you expect people to exactly. find you? Exactly. Like, you give everybody your phone number. And some people do do that. Like, yeah, there's, there's way more business in, in shit that I do over text messaging and shit. Because, like, if I really, really fuck with somebody, I'm just... If I really, really fuck with somebody, I'm just like, yo, what's your number? Okay. You know? Like, and that's not to say that, you know, if I... There's some people that it's just... You know how you have those people that you just know it's easier to get a hold of them on Facebook Messenger? Yeah. Than it, you know what I mean? Like, there's just those type of things. Well, and there's but, also levels to relationships, like, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hit me through the, if you hit me through the DMs, my own, you know, all bet, just hit me through the fucking phone because I don't see these. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, all right, cool. If we're really about to set something up, then cool. But, yeah. It's Social media is important, man. It is, but it's like, you just got to figure out what works for you because there are those people that are really good about being super candid into their daily lives and can take the pictures with their kids and can do all the normal stuff and people just eat it up because people know them as that type of person and they can walk the walk the line yeah the and, it's, and it's like also yeah and it's like if they still put in the work as an artist that people fuck with their music and that shit just happens to help 
you know, engage their fans even more. Who am I to say that that's not the way to do it? It's just not the way for me because my normal life is boring as fuck. I just be playing video games a lot in the little free time I have, but most of my free time is just music shit. So that's what you see. And so I don't know, man. I just don't know what people think they're doing out here on social media. Like, because so many people, bro, like you hear all the time, people just want to take over the world. They just want to make it. They just want to build their empire, all this other stuff. Everyone says this shit all of the fucking time. But it's like, how do you actually plan on getting there? Because everybody says like, yo, first we're going to get Columbus, then the world. And it's like, yo, there's a gap between that shit, bro. Well, like, and it's kind like, of hard to get Columbus. That's what I'm saying. There's so it's like, yo, and people don't get it. It's like, yo, you can sit here in the trenches all day and night fighting with everybody trying to be the king of Columbus and all that shit. And meanwhile, no one knows who you are in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? Like, meanwhile, nobody knows who you are in Indianapolis or Detroit or any of the places that are close by. And guess what? If you do become the king of Columbus, you better leave at some point because you're going to get to these cities and no one's going to care that you're the king of Columbus because now you got to be the king of there. So it's like, the thing I would just encourage artists to do is like, yo, travel every single chance you get. And that's why I'm trying to build the pipeline up to be a better platform for that. I want to get artists traveling and shit because it's way cheaper than you think now. With Airbnbs and shit like that, it's way easier. And so like, that's why I'm really starting to plan some like truly out of state pipelines and shit like that. And I'm really trying to build like bigger networks and shit like that because this whole King of Columbus shit, it doesn't work, bro. I'm gonna pray it up, Ross Thing, man, because you that's a beautiful thing you're doing there, man. Definitely. Try it, man. In Jesus' name, bro. That's that's gonna work out, bro. That's that's beautiful, because that like you said, you I gotta reiterate what you just said. People y'all heard what this motherfucker said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's beautiful. So I mean, one last thing gonna pop out of here. You said okay. video games. Tell me like so what 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 you what you rocking with now? When did you first start rocking with video games? How you said you because you just said video games a couple times. Man, so I you love them. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean I I've literally and that's what gave you music. Yeah, I've been playing video games since literally as long as I can remember. Um, the only system I didn't really play when it was like out like that was a, like the first Nintendo. But like I had a Super Nintendo growing up. Didn't have a lot of Sega shit. But like I had N64. I played a lot of fucking GoldenEye. Um, and but like I always played on PC and shit too. Mm -hmm. My older brother always had a computer so he taught me that whole side of things. And so I love strategy games, man. Those are that, that's turn -based, like oh, yeah, bro. Turn-based strategy games are my shit, bro. Oh, the whole Total War series. That's probably my favorite video game series of all time. So I, I fuck with Minecraft too, man. Minecraft is some of my favorite shit ever, because to me, when I played Minecraft, I was like, oh, this is like Legos. I was like, so okay. hold on, wait, Minecraft is that the shit on the computer? We had to put the uh, the the uh, the flags where like to not. Or is Minecraft? Minecraft is the blocks. Oh, okay, I'm it's, tripping. It's I'm, like, getting yeah. three, I'm getting all types of shit and stuff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Minecraft is the shit where yeah, you like you build your own society and shit. Yeah, yeah. You can make them do shit. Okay, like that. And they got the super newer one right now. The new one that just it didn't just. No, my, see, no, they're Warcraft. No, I know a World of Warcraft. Yeah, and then there was Starcraft. I, I grew up playing Star Starcraft. Starcraft is what I was getting. Into Minecraft, computer. yeah, no, Minecraft is like. That's the you one. Got like, the pickaxe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, pickaxe, yeah. you block the shit, you, you break shit, you build all the shit, you got the block. People have done wild like, shit in that game. Yeah, you they, build all that crazy ass They've shit. got electrical circuitry in that game. Like, they've got a thing that where you can build, like, electrical devices and shit. And somebody built a calculator inside of that game. Like, bro, it's the size of, like, a football stadium in relative size. But, like, somebody figured out the circuitry and built a fucking working calculator in that game. It's one of the wildest things I've ever seen. I can make a pretty good case for how Minecraft is more than likely the greatest video game ever made of all time. Because it's certainly one of the highest selling. I mean, GTA 5 just beat it. But, like, um, that shit was crazy. Because Minecraft, like, the map in that game is six times the actual surface of the Earth. Like, the original game on PC and shit like that. Like, you could keep walking for that long and always see new shit. That's how far I would go. Do shit like being like randomly generated or shit yeah, being designed. Randomly generated, but once it's right. generated, it's there forever. Yeah. And like you can manipulate everything in that game. You can dig holes all the way to the bottom of the earth and shit like that. It's wild, bro. It's so fucking dope. That's that's crazy as fuck. You the fact you said a working calculator blows my mind on so many levels. Cause when you say the circuitry, I'm like, hold on. So the computer was able to understand. Like he like really got the real computer, like the real wires. Of the yeah, calculator. like he basically. It's like he had the circuitry hooked up to these torches that can light up when like there's an open circuit towards them. 
And so, like, he placed enough torches, like, in this big grid that was, like, in, like, the down, it was, like, a football field away on this big, like, movie theater size screen. He had all these torches. And then he had all of those hooked up to different circuits that when he pressed different levers to, like, put it in a math equation, there was, like, a certain way you had to do it. But when he pressed the different letters, the number four would show up on the screen. And then when he pressed the addition sign or whatever, that shit would put, pull up on the screen. It would take like four or five seconds for the shit to transfer and get to it. But yeah, he that built is a, wild. It is fucking insane, well, dude. I might have to look that shit up on you. Because like even me, like in the castles and shit that I built, I had like security systems and whatnot. Like shit that if people stepped in certain places, a torch would light up or you can like boxes could make a sound and shit like that. And that shit wasn't even that hard to figure out. But if you're if you know actual electrical engineering and shit like that, you can do wild shit in that game. Right, bro. And if you got the time, like yeah, yeah. you right, bro. That's crazy. But you said so turn based. What turn based strategy games did you rock with? What you rock with now? Uh, man, just any game in the Total War series. Uh, Shogun Total War is probably. Oh my god, bro. Those are to me. Those are the best because, okay, the Total War games like in Shogun Total War, there'll be a whole map of Japan, and you play as one faction. But every time you move your army on the map and shit like that, you have the option you can play the actual battle like in real time and Bro, shit like that. You're literally describing some shit that I was literally thinking about making because like even when they're and I'm gonna look out my bad. Yeah, no, you're great. But like I've seen like you know like in the fucking when they're doing the battle plans where like yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. putting everything out, they got the map. They've got yeah. everything and they move the pieces here. And like I've seen an anime show where like there's literally like there was strategies like this, like why are they going towards the ocean? Oh, like yeah. that's stupid. They need to be going here. And they like trapped them and tri so like I definitely it's it's that shit's crazy. It's perfect for that because like there when you have that extra layer of because there's effectively two video games in one. If you want to and you just like playing the battles and picking the units, you can do that shit all day just by yourself. But in the actual campaign game, when there's other players, because you can play it multiplayer too. There's other players that are making all the different economic decisions and all that shit for their countries. But when it comes time to actually fight and you have to fight it on the map, if you're not a good general, you're going to fucking lose no matter how many troops you have. Damn. Because it's like a whole other layer of strategy that you have to know and a whole other aspect of the game you have to know. I love See, but strategy is so beautiful, bro. That's why and To I mean, me, I just fuck with video games that make you smarter. We've been like, playing Yu-Gi-Oh! hard as fuck. Yeah. Like, and we got it on our phone and all of us be playing that shit and... It's like chess, but you design your own chess pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just put them head to head against somebody yeah. else's chess pieces. And it's just like, you know what I'm saying? It's and how does it like just stack the different abilities and shit like that? Like, yeah. There's right. um, there's another strategy game I, I play called Defcon, which is really, really good. And it's, is it like XCOM? No, it's not. No, it's, it's really, really simple, actually. And it's all just about like, not good. If there was like a real like nuclear war. And it's just between two regions. And you have to place all your silos and, and shit beforehand and all your subs and aircraft carriers beforehand. Then you just press play and then it just goes. And then from there, it's just to see how many people you can kill on either side and shit like that. And you don't get to uh, and, do anything from there? Nope. Just... It's, it, and all it is, it's just like this glowing, like, you know, like the maps and shit and like the command centers in the 80s and shit, how the maps used to look. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, all like yeah, glowing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like that. And it's just this real quiet music. It's a great fucking strategy game. I play so it plays out quick. Like, you just yeah. set everything up and you play it. Yeah, every game back. lasts probably about 20, 25 minutes. That's but you can play that shit online and it's scary too. But see, like, growing up though, my brother had me playing, like, chess when I was real, real young. Okay. And Super so, OD. yeah. And then, like, uh, Risk. I played a lot of Risk when I was younger. I played a lot of, uh, there's a game called Axis and Allies. That's a board game that it was like, it was like a World War II version of Risk. And that shit really, really taught me strategy in general. But then he put me onto a game called Go, and Go is actually the oldest board game in like human history. Actually, it's like it's like almost ten thousand years old, and the Chinese invented it. Oh yeah, you talking about that? Is it like Shogi or no? It's some other shit like that. Well, it's like it's just a grid. So like the whole the board is just a grid, and it can be nine by nine or eight thousand by eight thousand. Little domino pieces. Well, no, all it is is just a white stones and black stones. Oh, is that And so, shit? like, one player places a stone, then the next player places a stone. And the whole object of the game is when the player has a cluster of stones, if you manage to surround them completely with your stones, all their stones go away. And whoever has the most stones at the end of it wins. It's the oldest strategy game, like, ever played by humans. And it's one of the, still the hardest to, like, ever play. 
It's fucking amazing though. I'm like, it, that sounds sweet, and I still don't even understand it. So you describe it one more time. So like, it's just get, a grid. So if it's a if it's a black one, if it's like a if it's like a black stone right here, and it's four, like four white stones around it, then I would lose all the ones, all the black ones. Yep, in the middle. Oh, it's just that one. Yeah, not all. Oh, so if it's a so bigger, what so if it's a bigger circle. Exactly what it's about, oh. because it, basically the goal of the game is to have your stones placed from one end of the map to the other. Because then, if they're, you have a complete line of stones that's guarding everything, they can't surround you, actually. They can't get fully around you. If you do that, you basically won. But the thing is, every time you place a stone, they get to place one. So they can place it in between two of your stones and shit like that. Mm. And so, it's so fucking difficult, man, because it can be played on any size of grid you want. There's no rule to how big the board can be. So you can play a 9x9 nine nine go game, or you can play, like, uh, you know, some of like the professional tournaments are like 1,000 by 1,000. And it's like there's no regulation as to how many pieces each person can have. So it's fucking insane. So you can get lost in some sort of Oh, yeah, man. You can do like hardcore games that last a long fucking time. But I'm talking about somebody can get confused. You'd be, you be like, see one all the way over there. Like, no. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> now, and then all types of shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, dude. That shit is it's cra- but see, I love games where you have to keep checking back on shit. And Man, stuff. like, oh my god, there's this fucking. Um, you might have played, but it's like I don't know if it's like Everfrost or everyone, some shit like that. But like, I want to play. I like I like those games. I want to start getting into those games where you can play them like multiple ways. Yeah, like because it, it's like it's like basically I guess there's some like big freeze that's coming. It's gonna kill fucking everything. So yeah. you gotta manage all of your systems to make sure motherfucker stay alive. Yeah, yeah. Shit. But basically, like. Your adults will fucking get hurt, so it's like, well, do you want to put the children to work? Or do yeah. you let the children oh yeah, you just have to make a shitty choice. Yeah, it's like, it's I'm, like, like, I'm like, oh fuck, and it's like, oh, this dude's leg got amputated. Yeah. You want to put him back to work? Or you want to let him? <laughs> yeah. Because if you don't work, I love games like, like that, dude. Like, I really I'm do. Like, I want to play one like, because I, I always play like a bitch the first time. I'm like, who knows? I'm trying to save people. Uh, yeah. You always get fucked over. <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I'm like, bro, I just want to play it again, just as a complete ass. I'm like, nah, get them kids out there. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking the dogs is still working. Yeah. Like, but that shit is just. I like games like that. That, like you say, get through those times and make those like those difficult ass decisions. Yeah, because I've always looked at strategy games like that to where it's like it's a first person shooter, but it's the first person of the general, mm-hmm. and it's like you have to fucking you're still a character and you're still trying to figure out how to get through it, but you have to use these people to do it. Like one of the craziest games I've ever seen in my life it was a game for PC. It was called Nuclear Dawn. And effectively, the gameplay itself was like Battlefield, right? Where it's a first-person shooter, you had four different classes of people you could be or whatever, and then you had to take over these resource points, like, in the actual game. But then, when you took the resource points, the more resources you got, one player on each team was playing a different video game. He was playing a top-down, like, real-time strategy game. Mm -hmm. And so he could build buildings that would show up on the map of the guys that were playing the first-person shooter. Like different turrets, yeah, it was wild as fuck, bro. It's multiplayer. Yeah, it's multiplayer. It's like it was, it was like thirty-two person multiplayer on a map. Oh fuck! And like, yo, you could build whole buildings that like the fir- the people that were down there shooting could like go upgrade their weapons at, or buildings where like there were whole turrets and shit to fight the enemy and whatnot. And it was all about just gaining territory. So you like needed that. to have a motherfucker who was doing that, who was good at that. Exactly, shit. and the you whole team they can kick shit. you out too if you were trash. They could kick you out. <laughs> And like, and, and like the I'm team. Like, why would you put the fucking bed on? <laughs> exactly, bro. You hear people just screaming in the fucking in the intercom and shit like that. But it's like you could do that, and then you they had to like they had to vote you know the new player in. But it was lit though. Like it was a great game. Like the shooting and shit like that wasn't like super top notch. But the fact that they had that mechanic in it sounds pretty old. So, so like that's why they need to start getting more games. Like I, I want some more couch co-op games. Bro, that thank you, like, fucking just, thank you, like, man. I'm just so tired of like, cause I'm good at fighting games, and I don't always want to fight my friends at the fighting games yeah. that I own that they're not like you don't own it. I don't want you to come over here. Yeah. I gotta teach you how to play and then beat you up in the game. Like, I want to play some shit that we can hop in. Like, all right, bro. So we about to gear in and be like, what? What's about to happen? Like, bro, it's just about to be bad, bro. Just, ah, yeah. We can play together, bro. I want to be on team. That's why I fuck with the Rainbow Six games. Those games and the Ghost Recon games. Is it, but see, is it couch co op or is it online? No, 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 it's couch co op. Well, they used to be. Now it's different. But, like, like but I'm see, like, not like, many games at all do that anymore. That's why I don't fuck with console gaming now, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I still play games on PC, but to be honest with you, most of the video games I play now are older games. That's why I fuck with PC, because I can jump from, like, Metal Gear Solid Five to playing, like, Star Wars Battlefront Two or something like that. Right. You know what I mean? Some shit that came out in, like, 2000. 
My th- my cousin Kavadis is him. Is that, like I think he plays primarily on PC just because you can get everything. You can, bro. Yeah. There's no backwards compatibility or none of that shit. Like you can just get everything, and the games are way cheaper, bro. Is the games are so much fucking cheaper than they are. Yeah, because um, everything is like it's already a computer and encryption and data and shit. So they like, oh, we ain't doing shit but transferring you some shit. Yeah. Bro. We really don't even have to charge you. <laughs> yeah. For real, for real. We just charge I, you just because we got to. Yeah, I fucking love video games though, man. I've been playing them my whole life. I really don't play them barely at all anymore. I've been playing them a little more recently, but like, you know, when I got older, it's just like certain games, they just don't hold your interest for very long. You'll probably end up having a career in it later on because you know there's rap Maybe, shit. We got to transition. We gotta yeah, transition absolutely. I mean, I'd much rather go into film, I think. Film seems a lot easier to pull off than video games. Like, and video games are way more expensive because, like, that's the thing. But you can do the film part of video games. Like yeah, you yeah. said earlier, video games, and this is a point that he made earlier. I'm not going to steal his point. I'm going to go ahead and put credit to Sam Thank you. Rothstein Thank for you, this sir. next comment. You said that video games are the medium where all the art forms meet. You know what I'm saying? That's where the film, the music, the you know the art. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Everything is forced to come together in a collaborative effort to make some sweet shit. Yeah, it's the complete like package and shit like that. Because I think about a game like Max Payne Three. Did you ever play that game? I didn't play it, but I've seen hell of a fucking. That game is incredible. Is it's, that the one where wanna... he had to like, cause he would go into like the, like where he was like kind of reflecting on it a little bit, so it'd be like kind of dark and like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more like it was like more like a comic book kind of looking shit. Like it was, it's hard to describe, but like that game from top to bottom had the whole vision realized. Like it was a whole experience of like you just played the story and just went the way the story told you to, but it still felt like you were in control of it. And like that's such a delicate balance to achieve as a storyteller that it's like where you can tell a story using someone else's own free actions and stuff like that. That's a huge that's why Grand Theft Auto Five is such a fucking masterpiece. Because it's like they did it three times. Like three stories that you could change in between every single time, however much you wanted, and it still told a cohesive narrative and stuff like that. And like it makes your experience unique. That's like grown man shit, bro. That like that's graduate level brilliance in storytelling and that's why like the Hauser brothers the guys that created Grand Theft Auto and they're still the chief designers of it today like those guys are some of the most prolific geniuses ever yeah. they be wild though apparently Rockstar is like a horrific company to work for because it's like they're just like yeah yo, you pretty much got to give us your lives but like in return we'll do wild parties with coke and strippers and shit like that so they'd be having like mad prostitutes and strippers in the offices and shit there like, they're wild in the Rockstar. They get sued all the time by former employees and shit. But like, yo, it's Rockstar Games. Like, they make the most fucked up games it's, it's of anybody. Game. It's like, like, yeah. like, literally their first game, the original GTA, they was just trying to make a driving game, but they yeah. just kept coming up with all these fucked up ideas, and then Grand Theft Auto was born. It was a top yeah. down. It's like, what if it was like, they wanted to do cops and robbers, they was like, but now we just want to fucking kill the cops, and we want to do other shit, so it was just crazy. Yeah. crazy. And it just got bigger and bigger from there. Because I've been playing the series since Grand Theft Auto 2. And so, I'm just watching it evolve. It is. It's one of the most magnificent pieces of media that's ever been conceived and shit like that. And it's just fucking brilliant to me. But, like, I don't know. I still, I think, rather make movies and shit like that. Because it's, like, it's just the goalpost is a lot easier. But now, like, if you want to do any shit like that, bro, like, they'll, they'll hire directors. That, and they don't want you to fucking actually make the movie you want to make they they'll just hire a director and be like yo you're gonna make the one we want you to make and you got to put mercedes in it because we got to deal with them then we got to put mercedes in the movie like yo that's half of how hollywood works and shit that's all those transformers movies are big commercials bro you'll be seeing shots where it's like the opening of a scene and it's like sony right. and it's just on a laptop for no reason right like they just had to let you know they're on the sony laptop Trump again. yeah <laughs> exactly exactly and so that's how all this shit is but so. that's why right now like we in a beautiful time because the creators, like the fact that we create our own content mm-hmm. and the fact that people like you and me and everybody else, we're real with everyone else. Like we're like, bro, that shit is fucking trash. You yeah. know it's trash. I know it's trash. They know it's trash. And we're all like, bro, fuck that. I'll just make it myself. Yeah. And then we're going to be able to put what we want to create. So we're going to be able to do whatever we want. Yeah, and it's, right? yeah it, like everything, man, it's got its place and shit. You know what I mean? But like, I don't know. There's just... Uh, it's, you just gotta be careful what you wish for in the game, basically. 
that's really what it is, man. Like, cause you can go in thinking you want one thing, thinking you want to be a famous rapper or whatever, and you can get five years in, you're like, man, I don't want to do this shit anymore, but I can't not do shit. You know what I mean? That's why you got to transition. That's why yeah. I would say, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, film, you say easier go post and I feel, but I feel like, bro, like they say, sky is the limit. And like, yeah. we can do, we can do whatever, bro. Like, I feel like. I guess it's just it's easier to find people that can help you make a movie than people that can help you make a video game. Yeah, those people that's are one of the things expensive. I want to <laughs> do. Like when I like the Yakuza's game is so fucking those sweet. Like, lit as fuck, it's bro. like because it's like your motherfucking like they fuck with real estate heavy as fuck. And I'm like, bro, first thing I would do like you, like where shocking stands is on on it is. You yeah. feel me? You could put like somewhere as far as like a, a, a I don't even know how to fucking put it. Like a video game design and plays like. But the thing of like that is is like. We have to get into that field, learn a little bit of shit, see the different places. Because I just did a, a recent podcast where I was reading Game Appointment where they were talking about girls make games where girls don't really want to make games because they're thrown off by video games when they don't yeah. realize, like you said, not only are they say, they say that games are for girls, like electronics are for boys, dolls are for girls. And if you don't let girls get the chance to make that decision early on, you feel me, then it's just like they're yeah. kind of like screwed to this like when it really and then they also said like science technology and engineering and math that's all computers and shit girls yeah. love shit that's about computers but they don't feel like they want to do or and it's going to be the leading thing to make money and women yeah. are saying they don't make more money than men but one of the everything is going to computers and yeah. we're telling girls not to fuck with computers and yeah. not giving them even the chance to fuck with them also there's just not a lot of games that appeal to women but also, that's yeah, another like, part of it. Like, it's it's not it's not about see, like they were also saying they don't want girls to think that games are just all about just playing video games. You can be involved with the music. You can be involved with the storytelling. You can be involved with the art. You can be involved with giving the female perspective on the female characters. Like, hey, more girls will play your games if you made the girl act like this. You feel me? This is how real girls act. Like in. Even now to the females that are in games now, like out Aloy, girls are really talking like, damn, I didn't like the first one they got was like Samus, but mm -hmm. since then they was like, you don't really see female protagonists. You didn't even know it was shit. fucking a girl until yeah. the end of the game. And you though, couldn't like, even beat it. Like yeah. who really beat? Fucking, <laughs> who fucking beat the whole Metroid unless yeah. you were like a god? Yeah. Or you got to a point to where it came out on the internet and you found out. Yo, in games Metroid. back then, bro, some of those games would be broken. Like they just released them like, oh yeah, well we fucked up and you can't really beat this level. It doesn't have a map and the game's huge as fuck. Yeah. So good luck with memorizing that. Yeah. But it's just like you know what I'm saying. Like you said, it's the meeting of all the mediums, and I think like you know what I'm saying. That shit's just motherfuckers. Sky's limit. Oh motherfucker, I, I forgot what I was fucking saying. <laughs> I forgot what I was fucking saying. But yeah, that shit is fucking. Video know. games are lit. They are They're motherfucking lit, lit man. Well, oh. where can the motherfuckers where, where can motherfuckers find you at, man? Man, at Sam Rothstein official on Instagram or at Sam Rothstein official on Facebook or at Sam Rothstein official on SoundCloud. And yeah, Sam Rothstein on Spotify and Tidal and all that good shit. Apple Music, it's the same. And yeah, they come out to the pipeline, trick or treat in the trap. It's at Hamptons on King. It's two four three or two three four King, South King Street uh, on campus. It's gonna be very very dope. What day is that? Uh, the the twenty seventh of October. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. This should be out before that. This yeah. Should be out before that. I'll be late for work. But yeah, man. It's the Back of the Class podcast where the cool kids talk about the cool shit, man. We got our boy Sam Ross in here. Good, man. Right, have a good Thanks night, for having man. me, man. Absolutely, man.